James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, September the 13th, 2014. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the unof it's, it's the unofficial autumn, because autumn is the 21st to the 22nd of September. But we're having a nice uh, low 70 degree Fahrenheit day. It's supposed to rain. It's supposed to. But I like overcast. It has that that eerie, mysterious Halloweeny look to it. You know, like fog and overcast. As long as it's not a heat wave. A tropical heat wave. We're having a heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know we were like uh, on the air and being recorded. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, uh, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And uh, I am here with my uh, wonderful longtime uh, co host and friend, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, the, the creator, the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. How are you feeling this week, sir? I am the creator. Well, actually, you are. You're the managing editor, also, of Censored. I am the managing editor. Yeah, stick that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> well, before I or talk, I mean, before I say my little monologue, make your little brownie and chew it. That's the way the crab cake crumbles. I also yeah. like that, though. Yeah, in life, you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. I also like that saying. Or frittata. Frittata. Yeah. Well, certainly better than the uh, stupid sayings and proverbs that Republicans mention. You know, like that As Asenheim one about uh, teaching a man to fish, give a man to fish. Uh, you know, I saw something about that the other day. And uh, actually, the person who said it was using the example of when Jesus fed the multitude with the fishes and the loaves. And that person said, yeah, but he only did it for one day. Uh, and your point is? What's the point? He did it because the multitude had followed him into the desert or wherever where he was speaking. And, uh, you know, they would have had a long way to go home. So he didn't want them to fast and, and, and to get weak on the way of their journey back. So he fed them. But what the hell does that have to do with feeding the person for a year or years? They make excuses. Oh, yeah, they make the excuse that they don't want to give anything to anybody. That's their excuse. No, they just don't want to give. That's correct. They, want, they don't want to give. They probably um, want to shrink government down to nothing except for the military because they don't want to pay any taxes. But, but they are, they're already getting away with not paying taxes. Yeah, the rich, the elitists. I yeah. mean, thanks to the Republicans, they're all already ha they already have their offshore uh, mailboxes and, and not paying taxes. Yeah, and uh, you see what happened to the amendment to uh, constitutional amendment to get rid of Citizens United. Well, that didn't surprise you see what me. Happened? That didn't surprise me. Yeah, of course not. Of course, the the GOP that are going to turn it down shoot it down. Of course the Republicans are going to say no. Why are people surprised? I see all these banners on the internet, you know. I'm not surprised. Well, of course not. They f they're the ones that are, they're not going to bite the hands that are feeding them. Yeah. These are the people that are throwing money at them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. But, you know, the hoopla before 
uh, you know, when it was uh, made and produced and brought before. They're, they were all oh, excited about yeah, it. Yeah, everybody was excited about hey, it. Hey, we're going we're to try, we're going to attempt to overturn Citizens United. What did they think was going to happen? <laughs> And of course, if if the Senate would have passed it. Bipartisanship compromising? If yeah. the Senate would have passed it. Right. The House would have voted against it anyway. Of course. So it wasn't going anywhere. But you know. I wonder how many Democrats voted against overturning Citizens United. Any, probably. Uh, any, any sellouts? I didn't, I didn't hear the actual numbers. So I don't really know. But I'm sure there were a few. Sellouts. Because their hands, are, their hands are in the, in the pie too. You know? I have to listen to uh, when I get home. I have to listen to uh, a video of Hillary Clinton, uh, sort of. It has something to do with justifying Monsanto's GMOs and 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 trivializing the need for organic foods or something. She's a, she's a corporate whore. I told you what happened. She's a corporatist with Elizabeth Warren. What happened? That's what happened. What happened to Elizabeth? What happened? Tell me. Tell us. Hillary Clinton, way back when, this was in the 90s, right. got, uh, had Elizabeth Warren tutor her mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. problems of uh, that particular stuff. GMOs and the banking systems and stuff that, like yeah, that. Yeah, you, you were telling me yeah. Wednesday. And then when push came to shove, Hillary goes the other way and votes with the corporation or whatever. That's because she had dollar signs on her eyeballs. Of course, of course. It's like her husband doing away with Glass Steagall. Glass Steagall, welfare as we know well, it. And you man, said Jimmy. You said Jimmy, more. Jimmy Carter was a tad bit of a corporatist too. In Jimmy some ways, Jimmy Carter began the deregulation frenzy. Ah. Because that was the Powell Doctrine, the Washington Consensus, which grew up in the 70s. Right. Which said that the, the, the less regulation we have, the better it will be for business and the growth of the economy. Uh, yeah, because they, they felt that all this economic growth and job creation will happen in the United States. Yeah. That was the ideal, uh, which never happened. Well, you know, here's just a little aside I want to put in there. What people don't understand about the capitalism is that uh, there comes a time when we have overproduction. We produce too much. And it causes a recession. Because nobody can buy all the productions that we do. You know what I mean? People don't we have to find a way, a system, that is sustainable. That doesn't overproduce. That well, produces what we need, when we need it, yeah. how much we need. Well, despite despite what these uh, corporate cock sucking uh, tea baggers, coke sucking, coke sucking uh, right. capital K O C K, despite aside from the fact that they I blur they see. they blurt out pro corporation uh, nonsense. Uh, the middle class has always been the true uh, backbone of the economy and the true consumer. All right, the, the the poor they consume, they consume, but but not like the middle class consumes, and the rich do not consume like the middle class. Yes, the old anyway. the old saying: How many refrigerators can the rich buy? Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. You know, since they only make up. Uh, between one and twenty percent, uh, top top one and one to twenty of the population. So the middle class is the backbone, and the middle class also make up small businesses, which these imbeciles on our Facebook group, the the the, uh, the tea baggers, the the right wing trolls that slither into our group, mm. they don't understand this. They ignore this fact. They ignore the fact that Reagan shifted the tax burden. 30 years ago from the rich to the middle class and the poor. They dis disregard that fact. They disregard that Reagan uh, 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 cut and ran uh, with the Marines uh, in the barracks when they, 241 I believe, were killed by terrorists. 
he cut and ran from terrorists and also gave missiles to terrorists who were holding our hostages. But has anybody ever pegged Reagan for these things? No, they made him a patron That's saint. That's right. They turned him into a patron saint. That's right. Great conservative. Yeah, he was not a conservative. Pistol down okay. economics. Trickle. Trickle. Trickle dickle. It never, it never worked and it was never meant to work. Well, because it was just a propaganda ploy, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you, you call A it. rising tide lifts all boats. Okay. You know, when you mention Fox News, you mention talking points that are, that are meaningless. Given out every morning. It's part of the propaganda. Yeah. And hook, line, and sinker, all these, uh, these morons out, out in, all, uh, in all these red states, I mean, uh, which happen to almost be the same states in the Confederacy, by the way. <laughs> almost the because same. Because they never got over the Civil War. Yeah, they, they, they believe it. They believe and all this uh, nonsense. They love to use minorities and immigrants of color as a scapegoat Punching for their bags. problems. Punching bag. Yeah, they love to blame them yeah. for everything. And of course, Obama, because he's a black man. You know, uh, uh, not looking at the fact that he did a great job with, with the mess he inherited from G.W. Bush. Well, he cut the deficit in half. Statistically, if you want to be a man of science and go by facts and statistics and numbers, well, he did a fantastic... Well, then you can't put Fox News. Huh? You can't put Fox News on then. No, 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 no. He he did a fantastic job. Yes, however, he signed the Monsanto Protection Act. I have no idea why. Uh, yes, the Patriot Act thingy there. You know, I mean, I mean, there's certain things he did. That's but, correct. That I don't agree with, but and he also was not allowed to give money to mainstream Main Street instead of Wall Street. Oh, really? The House would not let him do it. Oh, they don't believe in helping Main Street. That's correct. The House. Ah. That's correct. See, the proof is in the pudding. The fact that the, the Republican senators voted down uh, taking money out of, uh, helping to take money out of politics and thus corruption, that's proof right there of the corruption in the United States government with Republicans. Isn't that enough proof for no, these numbskulls? No, 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 because these their, idiots? Pro their propaganda is this. Well, we need that so we can fight the unions. The because un they're the ones who put in our big money to get Democrats elected. The unions are, are, are the savior of the working man. And, and also, uh, labor laws, the way they used to be, not now regulations on corporations, these are all friends of the uh, mainstream American and the working person, the working man and woman. These Good are your friends. People. Good for people. They're not, uh, corporations don't like them because they're greedy as hell. That's correct. I was bucking heads with William Morrow the other day. You know, he he's like that guy we used to have when, when we were on Alternacast, Taz. He's like, uh, you know, it to it's like it's like what my grandmother used to say. The person has a champagne taste with a beer wallet. You know what I mean? Or he doesn't have a pot to piss in. I mean, why are you pro corporate and anti union if you are not in a high income tax bracket? Or you're not considered a high income person? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like it's, it, would, it would be like the surf. Loving the king. Well, the serf probably did that to keep his head from keep his own head on his shoulders. Fawning. You, yeah, he yeah, had to. Sycophant. Sy a sycophant. Yeah. Now, what is the difference? You said that a, a ultra liberal is a Pollyanna and not necessarily a sycophant, or or, or is it synonymous? Nah, they have nothing to do with each other. They're two different meanings. I would not. I would do away with the language of liberal today, because there are no liberals per se. No, I mean the I mean the pacifist ultra liberal that does not want, that is afraid to 
hurt somebody's feelings or they're afraid to to people that people because won't like he them. Wants to get along. He wants but that's to make, not the real world. I know, but he wants to make the world into a nice place so that we can all live together. On uh, what street did the Utopia? What street did the Beave and uh, his family live on? You know, I, I don't remember. The I street. don't. I remember thirteen thirteen Mockingbird Lane. No, no. That no. was the Munsters. <laughs> I walk because I watched the Munsters, but the point and the Adams family. But I know what you mean. A utopian society where everybody loves each other. Barney the dinosaur, I love you, you love me, yeah. but that's not the real world. No, no. That's why uh, we got into problems in Iraq and Afghanistan under Bush, because that was his thinking. His thinking is that we could spread democracy around the Middle East and everybody will be happy. And that'll be more business for our companies. And it's oh yeah, and the Middle you know? East will become a, a, a corporate plutocracy, a corporatist plutocracy, or an oligarch, and, and the poor would starve and the, the rich would get richer. Oh, that's a great system to mm -hmm. force the Middle East to adopt. Well, what did all the, uh, what did the UK do and all uh, the Spain and et cetera? when they were colonial powers. That's what they did when they went into these islands and, and, and countries and took them over and took their resources. Yeah. That's what they did. Yeah, That's what it they did about. the same thing when the colonists uh, stole everything from the New World and and forced their ways. I mean, uh, look, look, G.W. Bush's capitalism did it to uh, Colombia, South America. The poor, the, uh, everybody gets screwed by companies uh, health insurance companies, all companies are allowed to screw the public because there's no regulations and uh, you yeah. know the, the rich get richer actually, and there's, huh? Actually, there are regulations. In fact, there are too many of them. Unfortunately, they don't handle the problems where regulation is needed. Well, if a, an insurance company in Colombia uh, makes you pay high premiums and then when you when you send a claim in when you get sick or you you need surgery and they just don't feel like paying it they don't pay that's like uh, you're taking high premiums but you're not paying out claims that sounds like a very unethical way to run an insurance company. Uh, absolutely insurance companies theoretically basically only pay out five percent of what they take in in claims. Oh, really? Something like maybe 30% they pay in administrative fees, oh, you know, go. for their secretaries and stuff of that nature. That's how charities rip you off, big charities. So that's 35%. Administrative fees. Okay. Yeah. So what is that? Uh, 55 or 65% of mm -hmm. the money they rake in is all clear profit. Oh. All clear profit, baby. Okay? Cash in the pocket. Yeah. Insurance companies and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there's your capitalism, you, you, you stupid teabaggers. There's your capitalism. They don't have a pot to piss in, most of these teabaggers. You well, know? yeah, no, but... <laughs> and they say I'm insulting them by calling them teabaggers. You're lucky I just call you a teabagger. You're actually much more. Well, wait a minute, are they, they tea party, correct? Well, tea bagger is a derogatory way of saying yeah. someone that supports the Tea Party. Yeah. Or the Tea Tea Publican. But like. why couldn't, don't they insult liberals and Democrats? All, all and the time. They call, the us, time. they call us lib turds. There you go. So why isn't it, uh, you know, uh, okay to return the favor? Because, because the right wing are very hypocritical. Ah, I see. And, and, and <laughs> not what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? No, it doesn't. No, the, the fairness is not in their oh, vocabulary. Oh yeah, playing fair is not a. I mean, if they were, if, if a Republican were a baseball pitcher, they would um, change the rules where they only they would be allowed to put Vaseline on the ball <laughs> to throw a spitter. Like Gaylord Perry used to in the old days, you know, yeah, it's throwing they, the legal spitball. They're always looking for that edge. 
you know? Because their agenda is, is like a must. They, they, they're not their good. Their agenda is to win they're at not all good, costs. They're not good losers. At any cost. It's to win, well, I told you. With war profiteering, the course is, is, is are the lives no. of middle of middle uh, class of middle class and the poor warriors. Of the children of middle class and poor people at their expense. Correct. Alright, now let me let me get into my uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame thing. Before I do Chisler's Hall of Shame, I um, I just wanna say that uh, from observation over the years it is uh, without a doubt that the younger generation parents suck. And let me give you a tiny example. I was shopping at uh, this market called Aldi's, which they opened one up in my town. <coughs> and as soon as I walked through the door, um, I mean, I, I was in no mood for nonsense because I was already duking it out with a couple of right-wing trolls. So. Uh, I walk in, and what do I see? I see uh, uh, a mother, a woman, of a very, very obese Caucasian woman with uh, two of her children. They look like they were of, um, I don't know, they could have been like um, five years old, four and five years old, something like that. They were young. And w what they were doing was they were jumping lying on and jumping on and using it as a playground a a huge display of oatmeal the you know oatmeal comes in a large cylindrical container made of very strong cardboard with a plastic lid on top and they were jumping on top of it and standing on it and I I, I was so appalled by it that I instantly walked over and I'm staring at them I'm staring them down. I'm I'm watching them, and I say, uh, you know, you're gonna crush those oatmeal containers. And she and the kid, the little boy, goes, Ah, I'm not crushing nothing. I go, Well, you're you're lying on it. It's only cardboard. I says, uh, You're jumping on it. Are you gonna turn? You're gonna turn that oatmeal into accordion meal. And then the kid says, Accordion meal. I told his mother, Ma, what's accordion meal? The mother was there and did not reprimand them? Mother did nothing. <laughs> but the mother thought my joke about accordion meal was cute. She says, oh, that's right. when you squash something like an accordion. So I, so, so then she said, then she says, kids, get off the oatmeal. Somebody else might want to buy it. Yeah, I would but think. But why did it take me to walk up to them with my chest sticking out, my pecs, and look down and just stare at them and say nothing. I just wanted to see what if the mother would say something. Because I swear, I would have went right to the manager. Because that's which, bullshit. Which, which, you, which you probably should have done anyway. Be because kids are not disciplined. I, I, kids, mothers feel that because they're a customer and they that gives the right, that gives their kids the right to ransack somebody else's property. Doesn't give them the right to destroy other other uh, person's property. No, sir. No, it doesn't. Exactly. It was it was a it was a big display of uh, very large cans of opio, and and all these happens to sell it at a good price, two dollars and twenty nine cents. Uh, Quaker oats in in a, in a regular supermarket goes for like four or five bucks now here. Right but you know, old fashioned rolled oats, and they're they're rolling all over the rolled oats. They're like, and you know, I mean, I'm waiting for the mother to say something. She says nothing. Too lazy to do that. If I, uh, I used to go to this other buffet called the Bond Buffet and um, the one in Clifton, the uh, the Grant, what the hell was it called? It was another buffet I used to go to. I stopped because people would come in, all families would be coming in, very crowded, and a lot of them were Hispanic, and uh, they come in with their young children, you know, and their parents and whatever, aunts and uncles. And the kids would run back and forth. Mm -hmm. They'd be, they'd be, little boys would be playing with their toys on the floor, you know, little toy cars with wheels, so somebody could walk by, step on the car, and go flying and mm -hmm. break their neck. 
the parents, the fathers were there. They said nothing. No. The mothers, nothing. No. Nothing. Uh, like, because their customers, their kids have a right to ransack your business. And, uh, hey, I was proud of him when he said it. Less gold of hardcore porn on the uh, True TV. He says, the fact is the customers are not always right. Well, in that case uh, right there, it's the problem is because they do that in their own home. I don't know what they the do kids. at home. Well, you can tell what they do at home if they're doing it outside. They're doing it, yeah, if they're, they're doing I mean, it in somebody what, else's property. Most of the times, when you're seeing a protest today or something mm -hmm. of that nature, uh, when dark comes, uh, the looters come out. An excuse to steal. Yeah. To riot and loot. You know, and uh, the, uh, some you know, blacks uh, got offended because uh, some some right-wing whites were saying, how come only blacks are caught looting during a, a protest and a riot? Because it was a black neighborhood. <laughs> that's not fair to say that. Yeah, well, that's what they were. There was a big to do. If it was the, if it was in uh, some all white uh, city or something like that, and it happened, uh, then you would say that all whites. Yeah. Did. Well, it, I mean, it I mean, it's, it's still a crime because it's not, yeah. it's, it's not protesting peaceful, uh, um, acceptable, peaceful protesting. We means have a constitutional right to do you, that. You yes. do not block traffic on the street or sidewalk you do not harass people you don't yell at them call them names or 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 try to you know physically intimidate them you're supposed to carry your literature your your signs you know make sure your signs uh the best thing is to pretty much get to the gist and say what you want to say on the signs and you know carry big signs double-sided and just be there and if anybody wants to come and talk to the protesters, you talk to them. You don't do anything bad. Now, what must have happened with a lot of protesting, you must have had a lot of people screaming and throwing things. And, you know, there's always bad apples in every bunch. That, yeah, but... Uh, that ruin it for everybody else. Here's the thing. Who started that? Who you mean? Uh, unpeaceful let's go back. Let's go back to strikers. Yeah. striking against a factory or business yeah. many many moons ago yeah, that can get tough. who started killing them shooting them calling the cops on and the Powers Pinkerton the, corporation. the North National the National Guard etc the corporation okay so protests have got a bad name in America look uh, J. Edgar Hoover he could never determine the difference between a peaceful protest and another kind. They were all the same. Nixon too. Because he was a corporate co cocksucker. That's correct. He was a corporate. He was a corporate suck up, J. Edgar Hoover. Anybody who sides with corporations is a corporate ass kisser. And today, well, they, you know. if you're siding with corporations, it's like siding with the king in the old days. It's the same system. When the king was hurting you. The corporations are hurting us today. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, you were not allowed to prosper under a monarchy. You you were you were unless he favored you. Yeah, there's the uh, dirty office politics, yeah. Same thing with the Popey. If he favored you, yeah. then you could have yourself a nice business going. I was talking to two pro wrestlers that I know, and they were saying, you know, in pro wrestling, there's no labor laws, there's no state athletic commission. It's pretty much office politics. If the sleazy promoter likes you, you're going places. If yeah. the sleazy promoter, if you rub him the wrong way, all your hard work is for, no, for nothing, for yeah. naught. You know, it's like, uh, it, it's dirty unfair office politics well the same thing with the with a monarchy or a corporate plutocracy or an oligarch you know there's no fairness in or a big in, guy like JP Morgan or one of those guys wanting to take your invention and make money on it instead of you 
It's all the same. Oh, yeah. A lot of inventors got screwed by, by corporations. Not in only inventors, but copy people who own songs, people who own yeah. books you and see, poetry. Before 1976 and 78, they really got screwed. Then there were some changes in yeah. the law. Yeah, you know, I mean... Uh, it's always been that way. The guy on top, that's the problem with capitalism. The guy on top, the guy with the money, he gets all the benefits. That's why I said uh, Nik Nikola Tesla should have not moved to the United States. He should have moved to, like, uh, to England or France or Germany or Russia because they... they you know what I mean? He would he would probably would not have gotten screwed over in Maybe those countries. He would have prospered better. What happened is the United States, J.P. Morgan and Rockefeller, they went with uh, Thomas Edison because Thomas Edison agreed to sell electricity to the public, whereas Tesla was a, a, a totally honest man. He says, "Sell sell it." You know, I mean, it's abundant. It's all it's around free. us. Free. It's free. Free electricity for the whole world. And of course, the capitalists, Industrial Revolution people. Yeah, that's not good. They went with uh, Thomas that's Edison. Good. How am and, I going to make money then? And who was the big hero in the uh, history books when I was in grammar school and, and high school? It wasn't Tesla. I didn't even know he existed. It was Thomas Edison. You didn't know that Wilhelm Reich existed either. He wasn't in the books. That's correct. You'd be surprised how many lies we were told in taxpayer-funded history books in school, and that includes what your kids are being taught right now in school, mm -hmm. all the lies. All right, let me get this out of the way. <clears throat> now, you've heard... Uh, before you get that out of the way, I just want to add something. Okay, go ahead, because... To these uh, being screwed over. Right. Uh, just take uh, uh, chess masters. Yes. Grandmasters for uh, Steinitz. Lasker. Lasker was in a hospital. Steinitz died poor, okay? I think he's over in Montclair somewhere or something, buried. Potter's Field, maybe. <laughs> but Lasker was in a hospital. And his wife comes to see him. And she sits there and sits there and sits there for hours and hours. Nurses never even out offered her a cup of tea. Really? Yeah. I mean, they, you talk about uh, hospital insurance today. I mean, you know, how it was then even. Yeah, health care and education should be rights, not privileges, like they are in Northern Europe. Of course. You know, or nobody should have to pay out of pocket when they get sick or, or, or lose their life savings because they're sick. No, this is freedom. It's your freedom to die owing the hospital, you know, all of your money. Squillion dollars. If you ever had hey, any. we could have had health care reform in the first two years Obama took office because the Democrats had control of Washington totally. But we didn't. They didn't go for it. They could have tax. They could have shifted the tax burden back to the rich, but they didn't do it, which proves that the two-party system is corrupt. Yeah. Oh, if we raise taxes on corporations, it'll hurt the economy. Well, gee whiz, it didn't for what, 50, 60 years? Or, or some idiot... Since uh, FDR? Some idiot right-wing troll says, oh, if you raise the minimum wage, it's going to hurt uh, uh, small, uh, the smaller businesses and uh, uh, fast food franchise owners are going to be hurt by it. Give me a break. The rich have been crying poverty. Tell you what. Bullshit. If Burger King or McDonald's says that, you know what I want? I want to look at their books. If you're going to complain about raising the minimum wage, that it's going to hurt your business, let me look at your books. Well, they I... They won't give you to look at the books! I have a banner that you probably saw already on this show where that, that shows a photo of McDonald's and, and a, a man that looks like managers you know, with his shirt and tie, 
and it says something to the effect that if uh, if your employees have to go if your employees that work for you uh, um, have to go on food stamps mm. then it is you the employer that are getting the entitlements not the employees on food stamps that's correct because if you anybody who works full-time and even Jesse Ventura said it and of course Bernie Sanders anyone who works full-time should not have to apply for social services or food stamps guess who else says it who the Bible oh yeah God's economics the worker is entitled to a fair day's wages which means in modern language a living wage that's correct like Seattle did fifteen dollars an hour as their minimum wage well you know if the minimum wage kept up with inflation and they uh, caught the rise of the CEO pay and etc cetera, etc cetera, actually the minimum wage today we'd be close to thirty dollars twenty nine something mm-hmm you know Okay, let me get this over with Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh, you've heard me talk about dollar stores many times. Uh, I go to them because I find, quite often, I find very high quality items in dollar stores. Uh, mostly the privately owned dollar stores, which are usually, in my area, owned by Indians, and uh, uh, they get what they want. You know, they whatever they order, whatever they see, they see that's a good bargain they order it and lots of times I find very excellent items that are worth more than a dollar but with the corporate chain dollar stores mm. like the Dollar Tree which I think just recently bought out I don't know if it was Family Dollar or a Dollar General they bought one of them out they're doing very well they're up and down the East Coast but anytime you hear the word corporate it spells trouble mm -hmm. in my book well you do not have the same uh, I mean y there are good items of, of quality of course in the Dollar Tree I go there I shop there because I do find a lot of good items there don't get me wrong but I think these dollar stores make money because not everything in the dollar store is worth a dollar. Like they'll they'll sell junk for a dollar, and of course they're going to make a profit on it. And but they'll sell good things, good items for a dollar that might be worth more than a dollar. So they're at they're at the mercy of the buyer that sends them items. But I want to put uh, the Dollar Tree and this particular company. Hanover, Hanover so uh, Food, it's called, let's see, Hanover Foods Corporation, Hanover, Pennsylvania, and they have a website, www.hanoverfoods.com. I want to enter hanoverfoods.com in our Chisler's Hall of Shame and the Dollar Tree for having them, for selling them. This says, Hanover, ready to serve chunky New England clam chowder soup. Now, I love clam chowder, New mm. England clam chowder. Uh, I, I am a, I am a, uh, um, I'm a foodie, a food enthusiast, naturally, because I love to eat good food. But I also, I'm an honest food enthusiast, because I'll tell you the truth. I'm not like those uh, hoity-toity uh, elitist food critics over at the, on the Food Channel. This tasted like shit. <laughs> this did not taste like New England clam chowder okay it is not worth the dollar I paid for it it tasted like cream of potato soup there was very little there was I I did not find any clams maybe two specks mm. and it is just potato soup cheap potato soup flavored with a little clam broth I did not taste any cream in it okay let me just check out oh gee this there was partially hydrogenated soybean oil in here ah! monosodium glutamate sugar 
uh, uh, liquid margarine. Oh my God! Oh my God! Soybean oil. Uh, I'm looking for the for the dairy products. For the no cream, no milk. Of course, potatoes are up on top. That's the number one ingredient. Oh my clam God! Clam broth, wheat flour, carotene color, um, disodium. Uh, Guayanolate, the sodium inosinate. Oh my god, you got a chemical soup there. This is a chemical. No wonder I didn't taste any cream flavor. There was no cream in it. Shame on you. This is garbage. This is not worth, not even 50 cents. Wheat flour, charging. picking it up. This oh is, my god. There's no dairy in here. There's nothing. No, I mean, I mean Did nothing. Did you mention clams? It didn't even mention clams. No, the, I mean clam, it says clam and clam broth, but uh, I only found two two tiny little specks of clam in here. That's probably all they put in there. The clam was like, the speck of clam was like half the size of a lentil. Oh, Look at this. I don't know. I guess you could you could see it. Shame on you, Hanover Foods. Dot com. Down a little bit. Okay. okay. Yeah, you got it. Shame on you. Chisler's Hall of Shame. Hanover Foods and the Dollar Tree. Should be garbage. ashamed of yourself. Garbage. Garbage. I'm gonna file it under G right now. Hey, it's going right in the garbage. Yeah, hey. <laughs> All right, now we can sink our teeth into these readings. Um, did I mention on the air about uh, about uh, on Fox News, the Sean Hannity show? They said that uh, the the girlfriend or wife of the uh, NFL football player from the, uh, from, Ray the Rice. from the Ray Rice from the Baltimore Ravens uh, that she she knocked herself out to mm. make Ray Rice the victim. So there's always there's always gems coming out of Fox News on uh, these programs. Yes, there's always a uh, a hate for women which is never recognized by all those women on Fox News. Oh yeah, they definitely. Well, the, when you think of right wing, you also think of the uh, um, radical Islam, the way they treat women. I mean, of course, uh, because uh, it's all the same. And uh, uh, traditional name. Traditional Ind uh, Indian, uh, you know, mm -hmm. India. Tra tra the right wing is the right wing, whatever it is. Traditions in India do not treat women very well either. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of rape going on in India now. You know, a lot of abuse of women. Well, what did you what did you call it in the United States until women had to vote in 1920? What did we do for all those years previous to that? Was that not some sort of um, put down of women? Well, they the founding father says all men are created equal except black men. Except black poor. They should have put a disclaimer. Except, except black poor and women. Red men. Men. Oh, and and the and the Na Native American. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They should really have said only rich white men are created equal. Yeah. And then it took it took in the early 20th century to give women the right to vote, and then it took the early 1960s to have a civil rights laws. Laws, yeah, 65. Put yet yeah, almost 65. The 1965. Mid, the mid 60s. Yeah. Uh, and all this crap that I, I had to study and take tests on in school from, from the bogus American history. That's right. They gave you a line and you had to <laughs> regurgitate it back. And you passed school. No, I had to be, a, I had to be like, a, like, a, That's right. like a drone, like an android robot. I, That's right. I will because they did not teach you how to think in school. No. They taught you what to think. Okay. They did that to me in uh, in Catholic school yeah. too. Oh. Uh, not Catholic school. I'm sorry. Um, what do they call those? Uh, catechism. That's Catholic school. Well, I, I didn't go to Catholic school. I went to public school, but I, I had to go before you get. Well, what the, the hell are you doing with the catechism? Is a religious thing. No, it's a yeah. It's supposed to be like. Catholic training for kids. It's like 
it, 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 you might think it's Bible study, but it's not. You, you just learn what they want you to learn. You learn the rules of the Catholic Church. Yeah. yeah. And I got, I got, <laughs> well, yeah. I, I got a little book that was mostly how the Catholic Church saw, you know, he, uh, 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 religion, God, and everything. And then I had there was a picture of God in there, which was a looked like a Renaissance painting of a of a of a, a man with white hair, a long white beard, up in the clouds, sitting on the clouds. In that particular book, did it tell yeah. you about the more than 15 million people the Catholic Church killed no. during history uh, oh, there was in, in the, their wanting to uh, convert by the sword? And there was a rosary in there. Uh, it, it, a brand new rosary in plastic, oh. you know, the plastic bag. beads. You mean the beads? The beads, yeah. Oh wow! The ones, the ones where they they say well, Hail, they, Hail well, Mary. Did they also have those saint cards that you were supposed to look at every day? I think so. Oh, the saint cards. Saint cards, yes. Yeah, that they mean where the saints are very, very well dressed and all very elaborate looking. And oh, well, I don't know about that, but. Uh, no, Who, who's I'm, that one? Saint Sebastian with the arrows in him. I'm thinking they of that. that one, I'm thinking they? of the statue, of the infant Jesus of Prague, Czechoslovakia. Oh, Madonna and child. Madonna is in child. Well, the infant Jesus was dressed like um, a young monarch. Oh. It was. Uh, yeah. He's not a king yet. He was dressed like 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 a king, like royalty. I know, but he's a future king. He's not a king yet. He has qualified to become a king. But yeah. In, in uh, I think it's the seventh seal, the Revelation says, and now uh, he is now king of kings, lord of lords. Yeah, the song. You know. Hallelujah forever. Da, 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 the song. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the uh, governments of this world are now turned over to him. You know. They mean the world tomorrow. The world tomorrow. Well, after the world tomorrow, where every oh, yeah, everybody will own their own land again, and have their own produce their own. There will be a. Everybody will prosper. Let's put it that way. Okay. Well, the the evangelical born again people they don't believe in that we're going to prosper on the earth. Well, where are we going? A spaceship. They believe we're, when we die, we're, we're gonna we're gonna fly somewhere and prosper oh. somewhere else in, in in heaven, up yonder in heaven. Uh, that's not what the Bible says. And of course, then if they would read Revelation twenty one, <laughs> they would see that God the Father Himself brings His throne down to Jerusalem. So if they're going to be in heaven, they're going to be mighty lonely. Because everybody's going to be down here. That's correct. This the Earth is going to become the center, the headquarters of the universe. Of the universe, correct. The capital of the universe. Capital of the universe. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I was trying to tell, trying to tell Billy that, but he he likes the uh, ancient aliens with von Donneken and uh, yeah, you know, all that jazz. Well, the point is... It's okay to be a man of science. I, hey, I mean, I, I think science is fantastic. Okay, here's the point. Uh, that every so-called Christian should look at for themselves. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, and you're going to claim that you get your tenets and your ideas and etc. from the Bible, then you better look at the Bible and see what it actually says. Open it up. Open it up. Don't just... Check it out. Dump it. All right, they let, don't do that. Let us sink our teeth. Even if you're not allergic to dogs yeah. and cats, if they roam outside and collect pollen and mold spores on their fur and then track them into your house, wipe down their coats and paws with a clean towel after they come in the house. I used to brush mine. I used to brush mine in the summer when they shed. You know, people complain about the hairs and the danders. Dander. You got to take care of them. I used to brush mine out. Usually outside, I used to do it, but you know. 
A lot of upholstered furniture and carpets contain volatile organic compounds which can be emitted into the air in your home. They don't technically cause allergies, but the compounds can aggravate your throat and nasal passages, mimicking allergy symptoms and worsening allergies that you do have. In the market for new furnishings, look for the low VOC labels if you're having allergy symptoms and can't figure out why. Consider having your carpet or furniture tested for VOCs. Send a small wedge of the material to a lab to find one near you. Ask them to test for phenyl cyclohexene 4PC. Other chemicals may also be potential offenders, but this one is the most common. Have your walls been freshly painted? Latex paint can also release VOCs. Meanwhile, allergy-causing mold can grow beneath sheets of wallpaper. For sure, and, 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 and the worst of all is black <clears throat> mold. In mold-prone areas like bathrooms and kitchens, use tile for the walls whenever possible, and look for paints with low or no VOC. Right. While some plants can actually clean your air by emitting high amounts of oxygen, right. they may also harbor allergy-triggering mold on their leaves. Wipe them down. The fix? Wipe house plants with a clean cloth. On a yeah, you basis. use like a, use a damp cloth so it, 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 it the mold will and the dust will cling to it. You know now they sell this nice uh, microfiber uh, um, rags. Ooh. You could even find them in a dollar store. Yeah, they're they're like sham wows, but they have a certain a special microfiber that is sort of like a dust magnet. You know, and I, I use them. You know, and. Um, computer monitor, TV screens, every, and everything else, you know, mm. they're, they're washable. Healthcare providers nationwide have been told to watch for an increase in a respiratory illness among children after the outbreak of a rare and sometimes serious virus strain virus. that has hospitalized dozens of youngsters in Chicago and Kansas City, Missouri. D68, 68, enterovirus, D68. I think it's called 68, enterovirus. Yeah, D68. And it reached, the, it reached New York State. Yes, it did. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is conducting tests to determine whether active clusters of enterovirus D68 V68, are present. I'm sorry, V68. D, D. Oh, D, I was D's right. D in dog. I was right, D68. Yeah. All right. In about 10 other states. We believe the unusual increases in Kansas City and Chicago may be occurring elsewhere over the weeks ahead, and we want to be on the lookout. Although 10 million to 15 million Americans contract at least one or more than 100 types of enterovirus each year, most patients have only mild symptoms, such as upper respiratory problems or rashes with fever that don't require hospitalization. The D68 strain of enterovirus is much less common than other types, but it's more likely to cause severe respiratory problems. And it just happens to come now it, during influenza season. It's just about influenza season, right? Yeah. There's a big push now to get your shots. Get your shots! Yeah. Oh, the drug companies, Big Pharma wants yeah. it. 
do they they have the sign at Walgreens, Walmart, get those vaccines, get your shots. But but vaccines every week I see tragic uh, I read tragic articles concerning uh, the harmful effects of vaccines. And it's at its best. Yeah. If it's true. The vaccine only protects, if it's the right one, by the way, Yeah. only protects in 65% of the cases. 65% of the case. It's not 100% true. And a, yeah. lot, a lot of children are ruined for life, too, from the damage of vaccines and die. What about Gardasil? Killing of girls. Yeah. Young girls. Getting the Gardasil vaccine and dying. Yeah, I saw a whole bunch of photos of uh, teenage girls that lost their life because of this. Uh, there, you, there you go. There's your corporatism for you. Respiratory problems such as wheezing and difficulty breathing that can require mechanical ventilation mm -hmm. in extreme cases. Besides Missouri and Illinois, the CDC is investigating suspected cases of EV D68 in Alabama, Colorado, Georgia, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, Oklahoma, and Utah. Oh, if it's a pandemic, it will spread. First discovered in 1962, the virus spreads through respiratory secretions such as saliva and mucus. The mucous membranes. During coughing and sneezing. Orifices of the body. Touching infected surfaces and uh, touching the face, the eyes and mouth <clears throat> can also spread the disease. Well, what the, what the news report said last night was that the problem is that children touch every damn thing and they don't wash their hands often well, enough. Yes, of course. They said for the least, for for, I don't know what it was, at least 20 seconds. Teach your children to not to touch every damn thing and to wash their hands frequently. And this has a lot to do with, this is hey. how these viruses are transmitted. It, not necessarily from the temperature. It took how many years for doctors to learn to wash their hands? Well, look. Semmelweis, I think it was Semmelweis, who got so upset and said, you know, he committed suicide at the end because he couldn't get his ideas into mainstream. But the doctors in the uh, not-so-old days used to come up from the uh, cellar where they were cutting up a cadaver and then go and pull the babies out of women. Lovely. Lovely. Very Frankensteinish. Uh, actually, medicine was Frankensteinish at one time. Hey, hey, they bled George Washington to death, didn't they? Eh? They had um, blood. Well, you got bad humors. We blood, need to bloodletting. Extract some blood. Well, they want. They, they felt they got rid of toxins, but if you keep on bleeding somebody, <laughs> you get rid of the life first. Yeah, like like person. like a vampire. <laughs> um, I uh, in my dentist's office, there's a photograph of uh, of some very old dental uh, instruments. instruments. Oh, God. Remind yeah, like torture things. That's it, what they're like. It reminded like. me of uh, Doc Holliday from the OK Corral, from Tombstone, Arizona. And they, uh, back then, they give you a bottle of hooch, uh, you know, a whiskey. That was your <laughs> anesthesia. Yeah. That was your Novocaine. And everything oh. everything was pulling. Speaking of anesthesia. Yank them, yank them, yank, yank, yank them. There was no cosmetic dentistry back then. Uh, speaking of anesthesia, yeah. I saw uh, oh, yeah. a video of an experiment they were doing with plants and ether. They put, the, the plant was in a, like a, a, a tub or whatever, and then they put the ether, squeeze the ether around in the tub, and then cover in plastic the plant. And this particular plant was, it wasn't a uh, Venus flytrap, but it was like that when you touched the leaves, they look like a fern. When you touch the leaves, the plant would go in on itself. So it would close. Yeah. Could have been but a butterwort. When it was in the ether, 
and they took the plastic off. The plant was as if paralyzed really? by the ether. I seen brain surgery uh, uh, using uh, acupuncture uh, as anesthesia in China. Yeah. I saw uh, the woman was wide awake, and they showed her skull off, and they were going to town working on her brain. Oh, you can the hypnosis too can do that too, but uh, no, nah, this was acupuncture. Yeah. I mean, um, you can't. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think it should be, I think the word complementary medicine is appropriate. That's what the late Dr. Robert C. Atkins used to say all the time. Complementary medicine. Everybody do what wor works. Everybody working together for to do what's best for the patient. Mm -hmm. First, do no harm. That's right. Like, do you uh, think that oncologists today abide by the Hippocratic Oath? First, do no harm. No, I don't think no, so. No, I think they abide by the like, cancer is a is a, a huge racket, money making industry. I think that's what they abide by. I would say so. Okay. <laughs> uh, something smells good, and that means meat butters. That means it is time for the uh, Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch, and I will now join with. William H. Morrow the third, our voiceover artist, and then he will do promo, and then we will be back for the bounce of this show. Um, I have to say, except for the fact that I'm not surprised that the Republican senator shot down the overturning of uh, Citizens United. Not surprised at all, but um, I don't know why some people were so enthusiastic about it. You know, thinking that it was going to uh, happen, but anyway. Well, if people want any kind of progress, they better get rid of all them stupid Republicans in the House and the Senate. Bingo. That's right. This November 2014. Uh huh. You know, uh, uh, I also put up a banner. It says, "Don't drink and drive, and do not vote Republican," because <laughs> you're. You're not voting for your best interests, especially if you're middle class or poor. Mm. You know, the proof is in the pudding, man. Um, We're here with William uh, H. Moore III. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people I noticed today they are they don't do what George Conlon and others had said years ago they're afraid to question authority they're afraid they're too lazy to research something and they um, they pretty much believe what they hear off, off the bat from from the media from their prof college professors uh, the parents of, the majority of people are very ignorant and believe what they want to hear but it's like you're wrong, you're wrong to saying people don't challenge you have groups all over the planet coming out the wazoo that no. challenge and do research and put no. things wrong that's what's called news and, and shows popularity or lack right. of popularity votes and this but the, pe but the people that come to disrupt my political group they um, they have certain assumptions what that, is your that I are never asked you on here. Uh, uncensored, hard hitting. What are you registered as? In the, uh, progressive independent. You register as that? Yeah. Do you vote? Yes, sir. Every time? Yes, sir. The only thing is they won't let me uh, participate in the primaries because I have to belong to a political party. There's only two. Yeah, I know. Well. There are there are some others, but they're not they're they're not the the established uh, political vote, party. You can't vote in a primary. That makes a lot of sense. But I could vote in a major election. Why? Because I'm an American primary. citizen. Well, then why can't you vote in a primary if you're an American because, citizen? Because uh, that's a good question. Because they they're, te they're telling me I have to register. I think the final thing, the major election, is more final than the primary. They're telling me I have to be a, de a Republican or a Democrat registered to. But they don't tell you that when it comes election time. No. 
That does not make sense. Isn't that funny? Is that strange? Yeah, that's very odd. Yeah, but but you know, some of these people, um, they're they're under the misconception that a person who's collecting welfare is automatically a cheat, automatically a wino, an alcoholic, a, a, a drug user, and automatically they assume that they're who's selling who's 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 these uh, people that are extreme right wingers that right wingers that come on the group to challenge and debate. They think that people on welfare are actually selling food stamps on the side illegally. I said, first of all, there are no more food stamps. Well, the card. It's, you the swipe thing. the families first. You well, swipe the card. Sell the card and give it to somebody. So you need the money, and I'll do right. this. Yeah, it is done. Well, well they're on the, the, the a card. Families first card. Yeah. Yes, not a lot. I've known a lot of people that have been doing it for a long time. Oh, so they get a family's first card well, and, Jimmy, the, Jimmy, and somebody Jimmy, rents the family's first card? Or buys it for a percentage on the dollar or whatever. So, say so you have $200, give me 150 and you get $200 in food or whatever. They make deals. Right. Jimmy, they, got away, they gave away free frozen turkeys years ago in one of the towns in New Jersey to the homeless. Now, number one, if you're homeless, where are you going to cook a frozen turkey? <laughs> number two, around the corner from the huge 18-wheel truck where they were giving out the frozen turkeys, they found the people going around the corner trading in the frozen turkeys for drugs. The drug dealers. Right, but you can't, you can't assume every poor person on a social program is a, is a, is a cheater, a wino, a lush. Agree. Nothing's 100%. You know, but, but th these Nothing's people... 100%. These people don't believe in helping the poor at all. Oh, that's They're, just total ignorance. They just want you to there's, starve. There's good yeah. and bad in everything. Yeah. So they're 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 assuming things based on what they heard when they were younger, and well, they're generalized. Let me hear one of the greatest entrepreneurs built one of the world's biggest corporations. You probably have you heard of Thomas Watson? No. Well, he's the founder of maybe you've heard of IBM. Yeah, sure. Okay. He put, you get a manual when you're hired by a medium. It's a book that he wrote. And he said something about never judging people. The majority of people, sadly, are victims of circumstances far beyond their control. Their, their, their minds are conditioned. So if you're on food stamps or this or that, it doesn't mean you're stupid or dumb. You might have the highest IQ in the world. You're just going through a bad situation. Remember, in sports, in business, the best don't always make it. The best don't always play. Same Politics thing. gets involved, this and that. Same thing, with the same thing with the entertainment industry. Oh, God, yes. You know how many qualified actors and actresses and, and singers and dancers and models? And some of the top actors, I don't I think, are more than they are. Yeah, it's just, be, it's just knowing the right people, being at the right place Getting at the a right break, time. as they say, a little bit of luck or a lot of luck. Yeah. So when somebody tells you that they pull themselves up by the bootstraps and they're self-made, there are not that many people in the population that are really self-made. No, but you look at somebody like Steve Harvey, uh, Tyler Perry, they both were homeless and lived in their cars or whatever. Right. Sylvester so Stallone. Stallone. You give great credit to these people that, right. that went through a lot. But they so, did get breaks from other human beings. They suffered and struggled for a long, long time, too. Right. And even in making, in Stallone's case, the first Rocky, he cut corners and left and right. Left and right. Let's be honest. Yeah. That first Rocky, the original, was made for under a million dollars. Low budget. Yeah. Low. Under a million dollars. They even cut it. Painting moment of paint, yeah. buying paint, to paint the sets and everything. Well, that uh, that movie that won the Golden Globe with Mickey Rourke and Marissa Tomei, the wrestler, that that was a very low an budget, independent yeah. film. Yeah, okay, even a lot platoon. Back in its day, it was very, right. very low budget. Six million, I think it was. Right. So you could go throughout history. You know, uh, but people, people should really learn to question authority and research. And well, they do, but only up to a point. I mean, a lot of people just make assumptions, and and, and they're stubborn, and you know, they assume things about well, a lot of anything. Just like the bitch and complain and whine too. Yeah. Let's be honest. Well, Nothing look, would make them happen. Well, look, look at Jeff. Look at generalizations made about race. You know, there are generalizations made. Yep. Uh, a lot of vice versa, though. A lot of the blacks blame everything on the white man. 
It's just not true. Right. And vice versa. Yeah. But you have very little racism, I think, on the, on the white side. It's a very small minority that are still racist. Yeah. Well, a lot of people you know, want me, uh, me especially, too, as you know my yeah. history. I've grown up, my teams were always half white, half black, some Hispanics thrown in. We were all friends, brothers, whatever you call them. Comrades. Well, don't you don't kids all get along with different kinds of children? Well, I'm sure it's in like general? anything else in general, yes, but there are probably exceptions to some school. You have bullying. Why do you have bullying in the schools? Maybe the kid gets picked on by his dad. He gets beat up by his dad. No, bullying in oh, schools. Bullying. Well, yeah, I'm just I'm just psychologically trying to handle Oh, yeah, bullying too. No, no. You don't know. It depends on the circumstances yeah. where you are and what happens. Well, You're always going to have those that hate and those that bully. Right. What about kids that... Uh, that they're out there too that torture animals well they should be in my book grind them up into hamburgers well they're not, or it's not just, no it's not human in my book you've heard animals nah. yeah nah. like i said before if i was an nfl commissioner yeah. michael pick would not be in the nfl well, he'd be in canada maybe or that's something. that's an early sociopath no i don't care you were an animal that's all i care yeah. about yeah. Well, I'm oh. saying if it starts that way, who knows how it might end up when they become an adult. I don't care. Adult. You are an animal. You're not playing in my league. Yeah. I, would, I will not meet with you or your lawyers. You're not playing in this league. Yeah. That would have been my my final. Well, it should, it should be a more severe crime because uh, they don't have enough rights as far as I'm concerned. Well, animals. Penalty, the law of legal system lets animals down. Penalty should be more severe. Right. So it's a legal system. Um, now today, occasionally in my town, I see a woman, usually a, a, a Latin woman of color. Uh, she's uh, pushing a baby carriage on the sidewalk. She's got an, an infant in the carriage. She has a toddler walking and she has an older child on the side and she has one on the way. Well, that's a lot of kids. No. She's not. She's obviously not wasting any time. Hopefully, the father has a high, adequate income because he doesn't it, need one. Because if not, he doesn't need one. That means it could be a milking of the system. That's what it is, probably, possibly, right. not probably. Every kid right. you mean there's more dollars coming in every month from the government. Yeah. Well, you you look at the age groups that are walking with it. No, my friend of mine. Grammar school. A friend toddler. Of mine, yeah. Because he has two kids, and he works. He's a plumber. But because they can't, the rent is too high or whatever. Blah blah blah. Forget the story. They are. They haven't done it. But I found out they are entitled to because of the two children and just food stamps alone each month, six to eight hundred dollars extra. No wonder the uh, the Octa mom took fertility pills and she ended up having Every eight kids. Every child is a lot more. Why do you think a, a lot of these foster parents? Do you think they love children? They probably can't stand children, but that's money in the bank for every kid they bring in under their roof. Well, if they're, if they're wealthy, they just have higher nannies to take care of the kids well, for them. Well, that doesn't happen. You never hear wealthy people fostering much. You no, really no. don't. But you hear these fam families of foster, and uh, right. I think a foster child is an extra 200 plus dollars a month. Oh, for financial reasons, a lot of They just stuff. take them in. Not that they're out of the goodness yeah. of their heart. And you don't know if they're really spending, and you know they're not spending all that money on each child. You know they're not. Well, my my uh, my friend's wife, when uh, they got divorced, she wanted a hundred and eighty-five dollars a week for one little girl, and you know she had other plans with that money. She wanted it; she didn't get it. Right sure. now. Uh, the courts sometimes are very lenient, you know, uh, and sometimes overly strict for the wrong reasons at times too. Yeah, yeah, like somebody being in jail for many years just for a, 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 a marijuana offense down, well, the, down yeah, south. Yeah, grass. And how about these two black brothers who just got out after serving 30 years? They finally found out they didn't commit the rape or murder. That's this despicable. Think about that. Despicable travesty. 30 years. Yeah. You think about that. I'd go nuts one day in a prison for herself. Three decades are wasted out of their life. Thirty years. You think about that. Thirty years. Because you're an overly aggressive, probably prosecutor who lied. Right. Didn't let all the facts come in, blah, blah, blah. Things were withheld or whatever. 
and you had the wrong people. We found out throughout history there are a lot of innocent people that have been in prison. I'm wondering, and we'll never know, how many innocent people have been executed throughout history. Well, there has been innocent people. We know that, but I wonder how, how many. How many? How many? I wonder how many. Think for, about it. Think, how would you like to be in a cell? You're proven guilty. But you didn't, nobody will believe you. And you know you didn't commit that crime. Nobody would, everybody's like, yeah, sure. Everybody in here is innocent, Jim. We're all innocent. But you know you truly are. But no one will believe you. You got framed for something you didn't do. Yeah. So now what do you do? Thank God for science and DNA coming along. Oh, it's yeah. too late for a lot of people. DNA is, is fantastic. But it's a little too late for a lot of people. Yeah. Sadly, it's very late for these two brothers. Yeah. 30 years. 30 years. Too bad they didn't have this 30 years ago. Yeah. Okay, think about that. Well, there were before DNA, uh, uh, the perfect identification was the pattern of the iris of your eye, but DNA cannot be. No, it wasn't. Before DNA. No, they never had the it. iris. No, they never had eye, eye nothing. Everybody's no. iris has a different no, pattern. They never used that in course. No, no, no. No, no, no maybe. No, as, even as, fingerprints don't work. Even fingerprints No, fingerprints really can work. be. Uh, so, if, no, you, they had basically nothing. There was nothing until the DNA came on. So many people got convicted yeah. on hearsay or whatever. False witnesses. And most witnesses don't know Jack anyway when you listen to them. And their story changes over time. Yeah. I mean, for proven crimes, you need you, DNA. You can't beat that. DNA. Oh, I, I just meant for a form of identification, like uh, to, to get into a, a classified building. No. You know. I think it's not... Uh, Iris scan? No, uh, somewhat. They still use the fingerprint thing. DNA oh. would still be your best. Well, oh, now they use biometrics. Is uh, you put your hand over a scanner. Well, like I said, we got. There's no ink. Before my partners gave me a super yeah. deck. We had a DNA scanner. That can't be. How did you find that? How did you acquire that? <coughs> I created it. You created a DNA it. scanner? What we were going to do with SuperTech, but I can't tell you how it worked or what it did. But oh, you mean you, you had it in on paper? In our, in our notes of design, ready to roll. And everybody said, this is incredible. Well, now they just take they take a little prick of your, your finger. Like it's, it's so fast and so minute. Yeah. You know, a little tissue. They, uh, That's right. It's like, bloop. And That's right. A little I can't tell you what ours did. Tiny like sample. I will also tell you our anti-hijacking system for airliners to this day can't be duplicated. Everybody said it's the greatest thing to come along. Now you had the skeptics. Well, what if they blow the plane up? Well, Hoss, that's not hijacking. Yeah. That's terror attack. That's different. Right. But when you're trying to hijack a jet, ours cannot be defeated or beaten. No way. We also had the first in the notes of Supertech 20 years ago, which overrides all pilots, and it can be remotely overpowered from the ground or by satellite. They still don't have it to this day. A remote, a remote If something's uh, happening, override. we could do an override from the ground. They say, we'll take control, and they do it. 20 well, plus years ago, we had this in Wouldn't that be fantastic if they did? They were able to do that? Well, we had this in 20 years ago. So you can see how my partner's skipping the cannon and what happened, screwed everything up. To so. be able to override a uh, the cockpit of a hijack it's not airline. Hard. It's not hard to do. Very simple in theory. That is all great. All electronic, you can override it, the anti-hijacking system. Uh, we had things you cannot imagine in Superdeck, which is why back then, when our accounting firm, which is one of the top two biggest in the world, I said, give me, I need a, their, 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 their uh, uh, senior vice president yeah. handle our account. He goes, this is incredible. I, said, I want a ballpark to tell my investors, what will Supertech be making, netting, not grossing, down the road? He said, within two years, you'll be netting 22 billion easy. That's unheard of. Wow. He said, there's no organization like this. I said, oh, you don't even know everything. I can't tell you everything in my notes. Because you're only being told what I'm telling you. No, right you now. shouldn't tell anybody I said, I can't, anything. Nobody ever saw my notes. I told him certain things like I'm telling you now. Well, David saw it, didn't he? Who? I mean, you're the partner that skipped to Canada. What was his name? Alan. 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 Who? Then, then, you, then technically, you don't need Alan. 
No, well, you do, because he did a lot of certain things, and I did You can't do it all alone. There was too much to do. No. And everybody then, wanted the notes. And, and then Ray had his duties. Yeah, everybody wanted the notes. Why do you think you have so many people? Vice presidents, presidents, a, a different president of each division, a CEO, a COO, a CFO. You can't do it all yourself. Right. You just can't. There's too much to do. So yeah. it's things up. Plus, we worked well together. Right. All of us. We were gr like a great team. A team doesn't always have to be on a field. Well, we were on a field. We were, we were on the corporate field. Right, and, and research and development field. r and I need to, I, every division, think about it, 47 divisions in SuperDeck. So I needed 47 divisional heads. Right. I can't do it all. Right. But I will tell you certain things when it comes to my head. I will relay this down. I want, I want you to start working on this and blah, 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 blah. blah. And, and, and we did it, Jimmy. Yeah, tw oh, a, yeah. a good 24-7 uh, different ships of R&D round the clock. Well, that was inside in the beginning because that was two and a half million square feet if you remember the main building. But as you know, my plans for Superdeck, which is why I need land, the acreage. In the back, I wanted to build a huge facility behind, behind the sound stage farm, which was nothing but a huge, giant R&D facility building. The laboratories, and soup, the nuts, anything they need. The be best engineers and scientists from around the world. To, because it was like one giant laboratory, it was to be called the labyrinth. The labyrinth. Filled with the best minds the world has to offer. So, so if there was another Nikolai, Nikolai Tesla out there, and nobody wanted to, the government didn't want to back we him up. We talk to you. We're you want, you'll, you'll talk to him. We're going to set you up in a hotel or an apartment, whatever you come down here, we work with us for a while. Yeah. And see what you have to offer. Yeah, because, um, <laughs> yeah, well, I always wonder. turn you down, we'll talk to you. I always wondered why he's, maybe the mistake Tesla made <coughs> is he moved to the United States instead of going to like Germany or Russia. Because the United States went with uh, Edison because Edison was willing to sell electricity to the public. But <coughs> Tesla says electricity is so abundant everywhere, there's no need to sell it. it well, the bottom line, I too, what's the most powerful force basically on the planet? And if you could harness it, antimatter. Well, that too, but you'd be a trillionaire. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt is hotter than the sun. Could, if you could harness a bolt, the smallest bolt could power all of Manhattan for decades. Yeah. yeah just think about so it. So you'd be a trillionaire if you could find a way to harness yeah. a lightning bolt. Well, the Tesla tower, they show bolts going into the top of the tower because electricity is all around us. Now, the, the, the temperature of a lightning bolt surpasses the sun. Thousands, Isn't that incredible? Thousands of degrees. The science is so important and it, uh, it just, it, it would be a detriment to mankind if money wasn't spent on science. I mean, look, look at Japan. They just built the largest floating solar uh, farm, solar field. I mean, solar plant, whatever you want to call it. Let's just say farm. Well, they have to. They can't go nuclear much anymore with all their, no. their tsunamis well, over there. I saw, really a pic can't. I saw a picture of it. it it's a huge, it's a huge platform. That and God what's going to happen to that platform with the first tsunami or earthquake now? Kiss it goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be fair here. Maybe if it was you know, an so. area that wasn't hit by storms. Or They're maybe, always hit all over there. Well, it's a floating platform, so maybe it's tied down with very thick steel cables. Maybe it can... I, I don't know. Make, I would, I, knowing the Japanese, they're anything but stupid. You know, I'm sure they designed it to be able to withstand certain winds right. and tidal surges or what have There's you. There's hydroelectric so, buoys. Uh, hydroelectric yeah. buoys that bob up and down and make electricity. Yeah. I mean... Uh, Which is know, great because the ocean is never dead flat. Yeah. It's always moving. This guy, uh, um, he's a wrestler and he's he's uh, on my friends list and he's a member of a couple groups. He he says he was saying the problem with U.S. economy is that people have to start buying only American products. I says yeah, but we don't manufacture much. We're not things. manufacturing them here. So anything you buy that says U.S. made in the U.S.A. That's a half truth. It's, it's it, maybe it's assembled in the USA, but the parts are all imported parts. You know, as of ten years ago, and I'm sure it's more now. Yeah. Well, it's gone now. It was either the Mercury, uh, Uber, uh, Grand, no, Grand Marquis, 
or the Ford, uh, whatever that big one, the police vehicle. Oh, vehicles. Ford Crown Victoria. Yeah, yeah. Oh. 78% of the parts came from Mexico. So in theory, that could be classified as an import. You know the, the Ford engine is a Yamaha engine? No, I didn't know that. In the Taurus? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. I never heard that. Yamaha no. engine, uh, it's like, uh, just like Chrysler. Uh, I never I, knew Yamaha made car engines. I know they made the uh, Wave Runners and the snow, snowmobiles and things Motorcycles, like that. Motorcycles, of course. I never knew they made automobile engines. Yeah. I never knew that. Well, you know, you know, the Japanese Zero uh, uh, fighters in the world was Mitsubishi. Which is made. a great corporation of products. Now, nowadays. this man, uh, I says, yeah, but the American products, especially the electronics, they're crap. They can't compete with Japan and South Korea. Money-wise, no, because of the unions or whatever, you'd be paying a worker so much, you have to sell a TV made here for about ten to ten to twelve thousand well, I mean, dollars. I mean, overall quality of the product. The quality could be good here, but it's you can't afford to manufacture. You know, it. You know like I, if you got if you bought an RCA, which is still in business, which I'm shocked, and you got a Samsung flat screen TV, I guarantee you the Samsung's going to blow away the RCA. Possibly or whatever, but I remember my father and a lot of other people said for some reason RCA always had the warmest colors on their TVs. I okay. don't know how their new flat screens are. I don't know. The image is good. The their, image their, is their color was very different and better, superior. Yeah. Samsung is phenomenal. LG, the other Korean co company, is phenomenal. Sharp is uh, the Japanese Japan. are tremendous as well. I I dare you to name anyone that's bad. Yeah. Today's technology, and then again. How many of these companies really make their own anyway? Maybe it's only a few manufacturing plants putting a, a little label on there and they're making for I think everybody. they owe it to computer technology. And who just bought GE's appliance unit this week? Oh, GE's appliance was bought out? Sold out for billions to somebody. Um, well, I think it was Electrolux for like three point something billion okay. dollars. The vacuum cleaner company. But they're not going to change the name. They'll keep it on there. So. Oh, yeah. But Electrolux is great quality too. But I think I think a lot of it has to do with the computer te science, computer technology, of the, you know uh, the nanotechnology, you know, shrinking the, the the main component that that carried over to televisions. Well, and what they're worried about too, the plant, the plant is in this country for GE's appliances or that those washer and dryers and what have you. Uh, so they're worried about uh, will there be job losses? Nobody knows yet. Nobody knows yet. No. But chances, chances are good that they'll be outsourcing the plant. No. GE no, outsourced no, the plant already. What do you mean outsourcing a plant? Uh, 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 they believe it was uh, Wisconsin. It was Wisconsin that was sent uh, no, overseas. I think it's down here in Kentucky. I think it's in Kentucky or whatever, but it's a lot of jobs, thousands. Right. That's what they're worried about, their jobs now. Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. Huh. But anyway, thank you You're for, welcome. as usual. Yeah, next time. Tell everybody, bye-bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. I want to thank William H. Morrow III for uh, meeting with me for our show and also doing a great job at promo for Newsletter Censored. Well, I want to salute the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia will be the, uh, the largest American city so far uh, to legalize uh, marijuana. Now is that legalized marijuana across the board or just medical marijuana? Uh, just medical. It's not, it's not, I don't think it's... Uh, oh, just medical? Oh, the hell with it. I take that back. Well, we're not sure yet. Oh. Give them a break, but uh, 
Are you sure it's not just medical in Colorado and the other places? No, this rec Washington. Uh, no, rec no, recreational. Recreational is legal too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 And they're collecting a lot of great taxes, tax oh. money off of it too, collecting a fortune off of it. Well, people ain't I mean, getting the idea that driving high ain't good idea. Well, driving drunk is not a good idea either. Uh huh. They shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, they have to use their their discretion, their common sense. You know. Some people do not have common sense. Well, that's obvious. That's obvious. What is that? That, that banner? I I I love uh, the the jelly. The fact that jellyfish have lived for hundreds of millions or billions of years without a brain is is good news for stupid people. <laughs> and I I had put yeah the tea party. <laughs> the Tea Party should be happy about that. <laughs> but uh, Let me put up a, uh, a video of a, uh, I guess it's some sort of jellyfish or something. It looks like a, a ribbon, a see-through ribbon, in, in, like invisible. You know, there are so many new species. It, it, you know, squiggles around to there, get around. There are so many undiscovered species that are still out there. It's a, nature is amazing, you know. <coughs> But uh, what were we talking about before uh, the Philadelphia legalizing marijuana? We're immigration. Okay, immigration. Uh, Obama is being criticized for putting immigration reform on the back burner until now. And he did that for a particular reason. Until after the 2014 election, the midterms. Yes. Okay. Um, and... Um, it really, I mean, a lot of things have changed since 9-11. I mean, the, the whole, the police state was born out of 9-11. The police state that we have now, the, the, the fascist stormtrooper behavior. Well, that was the excuse. That was an excuse, yeah. To get it all in place. Yeah, they used it as an, as an excuse. Um, yeah, I mean, at one time, Immigrants did not have a such a horrible time uh, getting their permanent residency. Yeah, once upon a time you could marry a, a, a you know a, a citizen and become to obtain your and, and you were in like Flynn. In like Flynn. Just just based on the marriage sir, the marriage certificate. Yeah. Exactly. Now you got to get married and then you got to prove this and that and boom, da ba da ba. Yeah, yeah, you you gotta you gotta come up with all these photos in an album, uh -huh, uh -huh. Of, you know, you and your, your fiance family. or wife with your family members during uh -huh. holidays and all this crap. It's like what they put people through just to get welfare. You know, in the states that have welfare, you know, New Jersey it's a lousy stinking hundred and forty dollars a month, and they put you through hell just to get that drop in the bucket chicken feed. And food stamps is really another drop in the bucket social program, and they make a big stink, a, a big to do and stink about food stamps. And you got to jump hoops, you know, flaming hoops. Just and they make sure that all those programs will never make you wealthy enough to not be on food stamps or wealth. No, you can't even get by on what Correct. social, what and social. And that's what they want. What social programs give you, you can't even get by. That's correct. Because it's all geared to get you out there in the private sector and work for the man for no wages. They'd love that. No wages. No wages. Not low. No wages. Well, then you're not, then you, you're talking about slavery. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably why they're, uh, some, someone from North Carolina or South Carolina got mad at me because they said the Carolinas, uh, you know, it's illegal to be homeless in, in the Carolinas, they arrest you. Mm. What, do they, what do they call it, vagrancy? I guess so, loitering. Well, that's an excuse. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Florida. They destroyed the tents mm -hmm. that the homeless were living in. The cops, you know, cut them up. That's an excuse 
to get you off the street into the privatized prisons so you can work for slave labor. For legalized yeah, slavery. Yeah, they got that debtors' prisons are back. Legalized slavery. Why? Where, where do they have that? Well, you just mentioned one, right? Well, All they, they need to do is, is uh, you know, catch you for vagrancy or loitering or homeless or well, if you're, sleeping if on a bench or whatever. If you're poor... And you go to jail. And there's uh, there's no Section 8 rent, rent subsidy, and I don't think... I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, is Section 8 back again, or...? It never went anywhere. Well, people, It's there, but there's it's like... It's just, who can get it? In other words, there's a, a long waiting list. Well, here in Lodider is. There's a long waiting list in Bergen County, New Jersey? Lodi. It's a But there's But local. there's also a federal Section 8. Well, I think that the like, federal, the federal it, it, it is a federal It program, is federal. But we have a local office right here in Lodi. But are, are, are they funded by the city of Lodi, or are they funded by the same federal Section 8? And, federal. There's a, and, there, and you go on a waiting list. Yeah. Because there are so many people that are flat broke. It's hard to tell these days whether a program that starts out as a federal program and then comes to the city or whatever is the same program because under Reagan they got through what they call block grants. And the federal government gave the state, the city, a grant. Right. And then the city uses it how it wants. Oh, gee. So. Well, I'm sure the EBT program and et cetera is something of that nature. Yeah. And the, run by the county. The EBT program. Now, 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 Bill Morrow was insisting that you can still illegally sell uh, an EBT card, uh, even though there's no food stamps. Like, uh, I'm thinking, what does he mean? Like, if somebody could borrow your EBT card? and go shopping, somebody else could borrow it or You have to have the person, when you get your EBT card... And you go shopping. No. When you get it, you have to have somebody named that will do your shopping for you. Otherwise, they can't use the card. The, the person, Only the applicant the person, cannot... Yes. The applicant cannot go grocery shopping? Why, the applicant can. I said, if you somebody can else, name someone else. In other words, like, um, like a beneficiary, so to speak. Whatever, but the, another person can do that for you. Right. Like, let's yeah. let's say the person on welfare is married, and they uh, the, their wife is is yeah. authorized to use right. the EBT card to go shopping. For the husband, yeah. Because now the the welfare cash assistance is on the same in the same account. With the food stamps, it's yeah. all on the EBT card, right. and I don't know where these right-wing trolls get their information from. Where the, you know, people on, think we're on stamps. People on welfare are illegally selling their food stamps. Yeah, there are no stamps. Could it be the old welfare queen fantasy that Mr. Reagan had? Yeah. And, and, and any anyway, I was I was bucking heads with Billy Morrow because he cannot believe that uh, corporate America is just that dishonest and unethical. Yeah, yeah, he, he, still believe, he still believes in, you know, yeah. in the capitalism and, and corp works and corporations contribute a lot of good mm -hmm. to our system and uh, he just cannot believe that all, that the system is rigged. So me yeah. and him were going back and forth debating uh, 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 off the air. You know, uh, not yelling, but going back and forth. And he says, "Well, show me evidence that what you say is right." Well, the there's system the is evidence is inequality. Inequality in in the distribution. The siphoning upward. The siphoning up, yeah. Ah, that is your proof. What are you talking about? Show me the proof. If the middle class is vanishing and becoming the poor, then that's a lot of proof right there that there's something's wrong. Well, there's also proof and in taxes, the fact you know. that the corporations are no longer paying fringe benefits, but their profit margins are up. What does that tell you? Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, somebody made a comment about McDonald's that oh, because they're franchise owned, they uh, don't don't you can't don't go after McDonald's as a corporation. Go after the franchise owners. Fran, when you franchise something, they're making a fee off the. They're getting a percentage, aren't they? They get they get they they get the fee and et cetera, et cetera. But they also, the person who owns a franchise has to buy their crap from McDonald's. Right. Okay. Everything. Yeah. The cardboard, the the, the napkins, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The I mean, there there and there are bird brain right wing idiots that still believe that the rich pay the the tax burden. I don't know where where I I mean as I can as well they should but they they say they're not they're not they don't have That's the burden That's how the system is set up but I don't think they have the burden anymore Well they don't have the burden they used to have I don't think they have but it's not that's not one should not be arguing they're that. supposed to have the burden that's correct because the more mo it's a progressive tax system that's the more correct. money you make the more taxes that's you pay correct. so that's what you uh, want to you know make clear what do they want but the less money the, the more broke you are the more taxes you should pay yes <laughs> that was how it was under King Saul where do you get the money and when you the become the kings. when your income goes down? Where do you get the money to pay all the well, taxes? I don't care that. Then you go to jail or whatever. And then you work for free as a slave. There you go. It, it sort of all comes back to that, doesn't it? So what? What Bill Morrow and and the right wing trolls online can accept is that the system is rigged against them. That's what they can't accept. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. <laughs> and when a person is in, let's say, dire straits, you know, I mean, how much more proof does he need? Does a person need when they are in dire straits? Right. I mean, I'm reading now, I'm reading a book now by Mr. James Tobin, The I, Man He Became. I heard of him. It's about FDR. And it goes into his polio quite a bit. And it shows that actually FDR in being struck with polio. Maybe it humbled him. He became more compassionate. I was getting to that. Bingo. Maybe, I hate to say it, but maybe it was God's way of molding FDR's the personality oh, of the great man that we 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 heard or, that we knew that America knew. Well, he could have been greater, but maybe he wouldn't have he was been held in humble. Check. Huh? He was held in check. He could have been greater. He's great already because he was elected four times. But he was bucking heads with people back then. He's great because he did the, all of that, being crippled. Yeah. Okay. Well, Teddy Roosevelt and um, Dwight D. Eisenhower didn't have. They weren't handicapped or uh, disabled people, but they were. They were. Uh, they had a lot more compassion uh, for the little guy than Republicans do today. They were actually good, decent presidents. But FDR was was the man, but. Would he have been the man if he did not, if he was not humbled by polio? No, I do not think so. I don't think he would have been. No. Because a disaster of that nature to anybody sort of uh, lets you know that, uh, hey, it's all, not all about self. It bites you right in the ass. Yeah. It's a it's a reality check. Yeah, you're you know it, you're humbled in a, in a forceful, drastic way. It's like it's like somebody going being rich and losing everything. Well, it's quite humbling, believe me, because uh, when he first got it, the first couple of weeks, it, his bladder was paralyzed, so he couldn't. He had to be catheterized. And then he has to be, later, 
I don't know how it was. Was I he think always they, catheterized for that? No, the, the bladder came back. Oh, okay. The bladder okay. came back. But my point is that in the beginning, uh, he, he had to be catheterized, and uh, I believe he had, they had some sort of tube or something that handled the, the, uh, the defecation at first. But even afterwards, I, like he regained some uh, muscular uh, muscles back, he still had to have someone help him, like the nurses or whatever, and yeah. his wife at first, to put him on a bedpan so he could take a crap. It's a, talk about humbling. When you have to, uh, you know, uh, piss some shit uh, and, and people have to help assist you. It, assist yeah, yeah, assist yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Huh? Talk about a humbling experience. And they also, they also tried hard to keep his disability uh, a secret from the mainstream. Well, you know, they, they, because people would have. They all knew it before, I and mean, you know what I'm saying. After they kept the, the, the family and everything, didn't, didn't want to admit because at that time, polio was called infantile paralysis, and it gave the uh, impression since he was in his 30s, what the hell you got a child's disease for, and that's the kind of. Uh, stuff was going around yeah, and it, then it, it, it made it sound worse yeah and then when he when they, they the, the legs were paralyzed and etc you know the word the word crip, cripple what we know as cripple comes from uh, the it comes from the old English cripple c-r-y-p-i-l which means like deformed they use disgusting. They use the word grotesque. In the old days, they used crippled and gimp. The gimp is kind of uh, recent, but uh, cripple was used back then. Yeah. 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 You didn't. You didn't have uh, disabled. Dis disabled. No. Handicapped. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They used yeah. to say handicapped, and then they they felt that they didn't like that word anymore, and then they they used the word disabled now, yeah. uh, or physically challenged. Ah. I, you, know, you know. I mean, hey. If you make, if you trivialize a dis disability too much, that just gives uh, the right wingers more incentive to throw you off of your your social security disability. You see that? You see that? He don't. He, he not. Uh, he's not as well. No, he's just physically challenged. The man made a bungee jump in a wheelchair. He's not disabled. Oh yeah, he entered the uh, special Olympics. Yeah, there you go. Look, he's racing other people in a wheelchair. Oh, he looks strong. Oh, he's oh, oh, look at that upper body. He's lifting dumbbells and he's in a wheelchair. Oh, this guy must be strong. Put him to work. There you go. Speaking Just another of excuse to throw him off his dole. You know, make him feel oh, guilty. Yeah, because uh, no, nobody, you know, the same old crap that's always on Facebook. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want somebody uh, getting my tax money for free uh, 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 and you spend it on booze and drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah spend it on booze and drugs. Oh, I'd rather give thing. it to Exxon Mobil. If you're, uh, yeah, they'd rather give it to Exxon Mobil. At 40 it, times what it costs in, in, yeah. in, 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 in welfare. If you're, uh, if you're on social services, you're automatically a cheater and, 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 and an alcoholic and a drug addict. Well, yeah. And what, a crook. What would you call it? Let's say we have a program here in uh, New Jersey, Bergen County especially, called Home Energy, mm -hmm. Bergen County Cap. What they do is they give you money for your oil, propane or whatever you're heating with per year. When this money comes to you, it comes in a check. And the check is made out to you mm -hmm. and your oil dealer. Now what does that tell you? That, that means you, you have to use the money for big oil. Yeah, you and have I, to put your signature and the oil company's signature. What a, but what does that tell you about you? And the, the per people who are giving you that check? They don't trust you, do they? Yeah, they don't, they don't trust that you, you that you would use that money for heating. That's correct. Why you might go out and buy booze or drugs. 
You see, because, that's how the setup because, is. Because you're poor, you automatically can't be trusted there you go. with cash assistance. Because as you just said, they look at you from the beginning as a cheat. All right. Oh, in the old days, if you were homeless, you were like Boxcar Willie, you were a hobo, a wino. Well, in the old days, there were a lot of homeless people in cities and towns bums, and cetera, they called you know? you bums. Ghettos and everything. I mean, you were homeless. These were, these were parts of the city. Yeah, what the hell did um, my grandfather call it? Uh, the Bowery? Bowery, Bowery bums, Bowery, Bowery boys. Remember the Bowery? Yeah, bums? the Bowery boys. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, what the hell was I going to say? Uh, we're still on immigration, I think. Well, I don't recall. Oh, uh, there you go. It's Ronald Reagan. Yeah, immig immigration reform. Um, the Republicans only like illegal immigrants when they work for them dirt cheap when they work for their corporation buddies right and they dirt and they cheap. landscape their mansions and they clean their swimming pools yeah. and they clean their homes mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and help out with cooking dirt cheap then they have no problem with illegal immigration yeah you know but they don't they don't go after the uh, white Caucasian European immigrants they always seem to be targeting the immigrants of color those brown ones that come over the southern border. Yeah, the, the exactly. They, they have a problem with them. Unless, of course, they are gaining something from them. Like I just mentioned. There you go. You know, they're so hypocritical, the right way. H-1 uh, 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 visas. Eight, well, that's another story. H-1B visa, visa is uh, you're importing uh, an employee, uh, usually that has a skilled labor. To take the job of an American. To take the job of an American with, uh, for with, half e the wages. with equal education. Yep. And uh, they'll bring over a professional, they'll sponsor them into the country so they can work cheap. Yeah. That's what the, that's the, um, that's the new insourcing. Instead of outsourcing the job, they are insourcing the H-1B applicant. Yeah. Now, Instead of hiring speaking the of the Citizens United uh, constitutional amendment thingy, uh, somebody I think is going to put a, a bill up uh, concerning that inversion, where they're not going to be able to do that anymore. Uh, take the move like Burger King moving to Canada, you know, so, so they can so, save so, on TX. So they are going to, uh, but that ain't going to go anywhere either. Yeah, in other words, discouraging companies from moving their their main office overseas mm -hmm. to avoid paying American taxes. Right. They're making money in the United States, but they do not want to pay taxes in the United States. Nope. Okay, so, uh, well, what what the Democrats need to do is they need to take all their complaints and and put it into bills, like Republicans yeah, put it do. To put a bill up, but the bill ain't going anywhere. Well, because they we control the, the the Congress and and they uh, and they don't the Democrats don't have enough votes in the Senate. That's right. Filibuster in the Senate and in the House, it don't go anywhere. Right now, how many seats are up for re-election this November in the Congress? Oh, in the Congress, in 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 the, in the House, there's plenty. In that, the Senate, I think there's like eight or so or fifteen. Oh, okay. You know, or, or more, more than that maybe, but the point of it is that like may 8 or 9 or 10 are contested and look like they may go, like maybe 6 or so may go Republican. Well... And that's all they would need. Well, the, uh, the Democrats better start becoming more aggressive and proactive in their campaigning. Uh, uh, as far as exposing the forces of evil, the uh -huh. uh, conservatives, and and you know, exposing all the dirt and, and unethical conduct, everything, they have to be more aggressive in politics if they expect to uh, gain any ground in well, Washington. Well, they you know. again, they they, it's hardly they're hardly going to gain any ground because. 
you know. The, uh, the consensus is that the both parties, of course, are guilty of the same thing. And they are. However, as I try to maintain, the Democrats have a little wiggle room. Republicans are stuck in their ideology. They ain't going to move. You cannot compromise. Not a bulldozer can move them. You're not going to compromise or negotiate with a Republican, so Democrats better stop using the word uh, compromise and, and bipartisan. bipartisanship. They throw it out the window. I know she used to sicken me. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, every other word out of her mouth was bipartisan, compromise, and even Obama was doing it. Forget about it. Just put it out of your mind. It's not going to happen. Let us sink our teeth back into these readings because uh, we've been very long-winded. Can this, we disappear this, uh, this week? Yes. flying saucer here? Yes. And, and if you have any articles that are political, don't read them. Read them. Uh, read them. You know, we don't have time for the light stuff. Really? The light stuff is political, no? The light stuff, if, if the light stuff is very tied in to our society and politics, oh, by all means read it. It is. In fact, now we that just you didn't, didn't mention that, we were too long-winded to today. I'm going to read an Amy Dickinson. Oh, God. I attend a small college in Wisconsin. Yes. I live in a dorm. My girlfriend lives in the same dorm on a different floor. I stopped in to see her this morning. My girlfriend and her roommate have bunk beds. My girlfriend sleeps on the top bunk and her roommate sleeps on the bottom. How old are these girls again? They're in college. And they have bunk beds? To save room, maybe? As I entered my girlfriend's dorm room, I noticed that her roommate was still sleeping. She had a companion in her bed. Ooh. It was a guy I did not recognize. Oh. They were both covered with a blanket. Ooh. I could tell that they were topless. So and the, probably naked. So they were they were they were plugging away. Last night I plug it in a plunging. <laughs> okay. um, as I was talking to my girlfriend, the guy woke up. He casually got out of bed. He was naked! So his, his schlong and his uh, balinis were flopping in the breeze? He quickly got dressed and left. I am a little concerned that a naked guy is sleeping in the same small room as my girlfriend. Well, he probably didn't want to spend money on a motel. I am upset the, that she has apparently seen him naked more than just this one time. Well, uh, that usually happens when you're having sex. Uh, people get naked. <laughs> I know she is not doing anything with him, but... What? He parades her... It's what? the girlfriend's boyfriend. Wait a minute. Oh, are you did. You get this straight now. Educate me. Hold on What's now. going on here now? This guy. She has a college. Has a girlfriend. Sleeps on the top bunk with another girl who sleeps in the bottom bunk. When he went in to see his girlfriend who sleeps on the top bunk, there was a guy sleeping with the girl in the bottom bunk. Well, I mean. And uh, this dude. Another guy. Was prancing around naked. Wait a minute. Nor normally, the guy, the girl that sleeps on the top bunk has a boyfriend. No, she, she's got a boyfriend. He walked in the door. The right. other girl had a boyfriend. But her Ooh. roommate was was in bed with a man she didn't know. Well, we don't know that she didn't. Of course, she knew him. No, I mean he's in bed with her. No, who's com the guy who is the boyfriend of the girlfriend on the top bunk? is complaining that another dude is is walking around naked in front of his girlfriend oh 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 yeah that's not right that's kind of disrespectful <laughs> I, yeah i would i would say the same thing well, what the hell is going on here what this dude's 
walking around naked in front of my girlfriend? Yeah, that's going to be a problem. All right, you, you got me up to speed here. But he parades around nude in what is essentially my girlfriend's bedroom. He's supposed to put something on before he, you know, leaves the bed. When I asked my girlfriend if he had ever seen her totally naked, she did not answer me at first. Then she admitted that he had seen her with nothing on because they choose to not to put anything on or, or, or is there some kind of teasing going on here? Or Maybe they're nudists. Could be nudists. Well, if they're nudists, then it's like another face in the crowd. What should I do? Amy's answer. What should you do? You are not called upon to do anything. This situation does not seem to bother your girlfriend. If you were invited to enter the room and your girlfriend's female roommate were walking around nude, would it bother you? Would it bother your girlfriend? Ugh. I am trying to step back and describe a scenario in which the three people involved are deliberately exposing themselves or at the very least not bothering to cover themselves. And how hard is it to throw on a towel? Yeah, or put your underwear on or something. If your girlfriend does not like the situation, she should contact her resident advisor and also the Dean of Housing to complain. This situation obviously makes you uncomfortable and you are feeling jealous. You and your girlfriend need to talk about this. You too may have different nudity comfort levels which might be something you can work through. However, you might also have different values and values are non-negotiable. See the problem with Republicans? Their values are non-negotiable. Even though wrong. Uh, so they can't back up their values. They can't back them up. With any evidence but, at all. That's correct, but they will adhere to them. Yeah, yeah. well, it's also right-wing values are like what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. Like, in other words, men can Men can do this, that, and the other thing, but women cannot. Mm -hmm. You know, um, things of that nature. Older people who have relied on a class of drugs called benzodiazepines to reduce anxiety or induce sleep are at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Benzodiazepines, marketed under such names as Xanax, Wow, Valium, Valium, Ativan, Yeah, Clonopin, Clonopin, yeah, are widely used to treat insomnia, agitation, and anxiety, all of which can be early signs of Alzheimer's in the elderly. Anxi anxiety. But the current study sought to distang disentangle the anzo benzodiazepines use in treating early dementia symptoms, probing instead the possibility that heavy use of the medications may permit, cause, or hasten the onset of Alzheimer's. The study compared the pattern of benzodiazepines use in 1,796 elderly people diagnosed with Alzheimer's with that of 7,184 similar people who had no such diagnosis. Such a study design conducted by French and Canadian researchers mm -hmm. and published this week in the journal BMJ 
cannot by itself establish that more intensive use of the drugs causes Alzheimer's disease, but it strengthens the suspicion. Among the study participants, over 66 who were living independently in the Canadian province of Quebec. Okay. Those who took low dose benzodiazepines medication or who took higher doses, but very briefly or infrequently, did not see their Alzheimer's risk go up five years after they were first prescribed such a medication. But the picture was more worrisome for those who frequently took long-acting benzodiazepines, who frequently took high doses, or who took any such drugs regularly over several months. The benzodiazepines specifically considered by the researchers were the short-acting and anti-anxiety medications, Alloprezolam, Xanax, Lorazepam, Ativan, Oxazepam, Seresta, and Diazepam, Valium. And the longer acting anti-seizure and hypnotic drugs frequently used to treat insomnia, Clonazepam, Bonapin, Fluorazepam, Dolmane, Midazola, Midazolam, Versed, and Nitrazepam, and Legolam, Mogadon, Tamazam, Tamazazam, Restoril, and tri uh, Triazolam, Halcyon. Wow. The widely prescribed medicines, marketed as, as Ambien, Lunesta, and Sonata, gener generically named Zolpidem, Esopicolone, and Zalop uh, Zaloplon. <laughs> are a typical benzodiazepine. Well, and we're not included in the analysis. I see the advertisements for these drugs all the time on primetime TV and there's also a new drug out for uh, diabetics and their blood sugar and uh, you know, there's always a... Genuvoderm, uh, the, 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 the Elva one, yes. Yeah, there, there's, and there's always like um, like extra supplementary medications that they recommend you take besides your main one. It's a racket. Well, those uh, those uh, new diabetic ones uh, are usually uh, ones that uh, force the uh, pancreas to produce more insulin. Lovely. And one of the big problems with them is they fuck you up. Low blood sugar. Which can kill you, by the way. Okay. Well, the body was not meant to take these synthetic toxins, these pharmaceuticals. I mean, it's, it's a racket. It's a big pharma racket. Yeah. And, and, and it, it takes an intelligent person to act, realize this. I mean, even the average uneducated person has is, is got to say, eventually, hey, What's going on here? Why why do I have to take all these prescription drugs? They're filling up my medicine cabinet. And killing my liver. And I and I still feel like crap and I'm taking all of these. I mean, it's common sense. And I gotta do it for the rest of my life. That's another red flag that goes up, that should go up. Doctor wants me to take them for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. This is not normal, this is not natural. Continuing, the study authors created an index that gauged the intensity of a participant's benzodiazepine use and found that five years after an in initial prescription, Alzheimer's risk mounted steadily. 
Those who took the cumulative equivalent of daily doses for three to six months over a five-year period were roughly 32% more likely to develop Alzheimer's than those who took none. Those who took the cumulative equivalent of a full daily dose for more than six months were 84% more likely to do so. There's already strong research that frequent or regular benzodiazepine use degrades memory and mental performance in humans and animals. And some research suggests that with regular use of this class of drugs, the receptors to which they bind in the brain become less active. Mm -hmm. Lower activity of those receptors has been linked to cognitive decline. Well, and of course, there are many fantastic proven natural substances that can be taken instead of these drugs. You know, that, that'll have to be, that's a, that's a whole different, separate, holistic health talk show. Kettle of fish? All different kettlefish. Yeah. So what did what you got there, Chief? You got any? Uh, no. Any heavy duty uh, political reading as our last reading? No, we have a nice. Oh no, a nice one. Well, you, you know we're helping people. Yeah, but this is called these. uncensored, hard hitting truth. Well, where are you going to get the good uncensored truth? Uh, Let's say you have a particular I'm, psychological I mean, problem I mean, or something. I mean, digging up some, like proving a conspiracy theory, digging up some dirt, some real Leave dirt. Leave that to the Jesse Venturas what? and the people who have money. Well, then why are we called. To go after that. Why are we called uncensored, hard hitting truth? If we can't. Well, it has hard. nothing to do with the original investigation, which requires moolah. Oh, you're talking what about... What are you, uh, 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 what, what, Woodward and Bernstein? From the Washington Post? This Going after, uh, 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 Deep Throat? No, this seems... Nixon? This seems... Well, this, this, uh, I mean, uh, you know I, I, I do not care for our local newspaper at all. Um, um, but online, there's, there's plenty of, uh, material and evidence all that material is built on someone else's material that had done the original work right because they had the money to do it right then you come out as a critic or something else as an applauder see and you and you and you give your uh, your take on it that's great like similar to when the president talks to the nation and then there are people who give their take on it when he's done yeah, but they usually don't stick to his issue when they do that, no, especially they, if it's Fox News. They go off It's on just that he's wrong. Yeah. You know, whatever. So you got to look for that, too. But the point is that only it's the same capitalistic system crap. Only he with the capital can do these things, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, as far as data goes, uh, there are there are tons of online yeah. news articles. But it's someone data. else's data that you're pulling together yeah. and making something out of it. Right. You didn't originally come up with any of that. That's my point. No, no, they did. And the, you can't. They did the research, yeah. Yeah. You can't do it unless you had the moolah. Or somebody uh right. somebody gives you the money to do your research. Right. <laughs> well, well, JP Morgan gave the money to Tesla. Yeah, well, a lot of people listen, but all the the true data that's in these reputable online articles, I'm sure there are multitudes of American citizens and internationally, you know, there are multitudes of people who do not encounter the article and read it. The you original, know, unfortunately, one. yes, of course, uh, unfortunately, like like let's say. What would you consider a good source, reliable? Huffington Post? No, no, no. no. You, you're not too crazy about the Huffington Post? Not crazy about anything that comes online. Yeah, but it's the Huffington Post. 
So. Um, or who, who's that? That, How about the, that guy that's always flapping his jaws. The Young Turks. Uh, young, yeah, all of these things the uh, are fine as they stand. But the best way to deal with them is to combine them. Then you might be getting some uh, close to the truth. Right. See? But just accepting one source, I don't think so. Unless that particular one source has done the combination for you. Then you might be getting really close to the truth. Yeah. Like like there's some like health wise, the uh, the alliance for um natural healing. Natural healing or natural health. Yeah. Uh um yeah, there, there are some good organizations that, but, but then again, then again, when it comes to health, Natural News has uh, come out and put articles out there that sound like they were criticizing uh, progressives and, and, and promoting uh, uh, right-wing ideas. You know? Possible. You know, maybe the, the person who runs Natural Health is a Republican. You know, because why would they only put out right-wing articles? Because if you're into holistic health, most people that are, are almost always progressive and liberal Yeah. that are into the holistic health movement. Right, but again, you're, you're beginning to think in terms of liberal, uh, conservative, as political parties. They are not. Democrats, Republicans, these are the parties. But a progressive, a liberal, a, a conservative, these are character structures. In other words, being pro-corporate versus pro-people is a character structure. Exactly. That's Wilhelm Reich. Yeah, like, okay. oh, I'm pro-corporate, uh, uh, I'm anti-social services, I'm anti... Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> it was a cat. Anti uh, uh, women's rights, so on and so forth. Uh, but anyway, we, we got, got a lid on on her bowl, please, before he gets into it. And I'll start reading here. Put a, put a lid on that bowl. Yeah, there's a lid on top oh, of the okay. other bowl. Yeah, we're just we're talking about cats, people. Yeah, the mousers. Yeah. There you go. Hey, Steve. That's it. That's going? needy. That's not Steve. That's not Steve? No. Oh. Surfing in Petersburg, Illinois raised good points about men who use online dating services. Okay. However, oh many of the things she pointed out could also be said of women who put their ads on the site. The pickings are just as slim on our side of the fence. Don't overdo your makeup and hair in your photos. While some makeup can enhance a lady's look, we're not seeking someone who looks ready to go trick-or-treating or perform as a clown in the circus. Decent men don't want to see all of their, of your physical attributes on these sites. Dress appropriately for your age and don't allow the girls to burst out of your low neckline. <sighs> don't start your first conversation with, what do you do? How much money do you make? Oh boy, that's rude. I would refuse to answer those questions. What do you want? is an extremely affectionate and friendly cat here. I'm beginning to think that that socks instead of instead of needy. I don't know, man. There's a lot of cat. There's a lot of gatos around here, and this one is yeah, but I don't pretty like friendly. To get friendly in the house here with I, my other guys. Yeah. Anyway, is this female or, or male? This is a male criticizing. The no, I mean the, the, the oh, cat. Oh, that's a male. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead. Intelligent men will realize that you are not as concerned with finding a quality guy as you are with looking for a wallet. Well, that, that's what a lot of men accuse uh, uh, today's woman of 
doing. They want to be independent when it comes to employment and, and making money, but they they want to uh, pretty much use the man uh, for what they can get money-wise. You know, yeah. you know they they don't really want a a serious deep love relationship. They ju they're just uh, like opportunists. Uh, what's the word? Mercenaries. Out, yeah. out for what they can get. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the gold digger, the money Gold blower. diggers, there you go. You don't have to speak perfectly, but the teen lingo and texting abbreviations are a real turn off. Don't constantly complain about your ex. It provides insight as to why he opted to break off your relationship or file for divorce. You mean if you complain about a, someone in your past. Um, it's giving ideas up front here. Hey, woo -hoo. Well, you know what? What annoys me about the dating process of today uh, with Americans, American women, is that uh, it's 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 it seems much much tougher than a job interview. I mean, a job interview is actually easier. <laughs> than uh, having a woman go through the checklist, so to speak. You know, uh, don't worry about the cat. Pay attention to the show. I've got the show here. i got the answer up yet. All right, all right, go ahead. Can you finish up. I'm waiting for you to finish it. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's really, it's almost like they want the perfect boyfriend or future husband. You know, they just go through this long checklist, so nitpicky. Uh, uh, and And... Money should never come up, uh, but it always, they ask you. That's the first thing. On, on, on internet dating websites, they ask for you to post your income. What the hell does that have to do with an honest love relationship, a potential love relationship? I don't know. It shouldn't, unless a person joins a dating site that is designed to hook up women with rich men and it does exist by the way yes it does such a site and the men know it and the women know it and they both are aware of the objective but uh, I think it's very rude to have you put down your your income range of course in uh, online dating I'm done and that uh, for the for the uh, for the online website that probably helps in their abilities to to uh, uh, skew uh, ads towards your way. Hey, there you go. How much go. you make? There you go. They're, they're gathering some personal data on every applicant, every member, and they are setting you up for receiving advertisements, which there is, by the way, mm -hmm. a lot of advertisements. Like, uh, <coughs> like on Facebook and um, Twitter. Twitter. You know, so, social networks. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Okay, here's another answer uh, she gives. Uh, uh, no, another complaint by a gentleman. To the ladies, I advise, don't post a 10-year-old photo as being the way you currently look. And don't post uh, a sexy photo of your daughter. Yeah, in place of you. A yours. lot of older women will post photos of their daughter. If she's pretty, yeah. It's going to bite him on the ass anyway, eventually. And don't you know. lie about your marital status or the number of times you've been married. <clears throat> These will come back to bite you in the ass. That's right. A few extra pounds does not mean a hundred pounds overweight. Yeah, or, or um, more to love. That's another stupid way of explaining. <clears throat> if they say more to love, then they're obese. If you are obese, admit it. And say you are working on getting the weight off. And you're make working, sure that you you're are. working at it? Yeah, sure. Okay. For women who post photos of their pets, it's great that you love them. But I'm only looking to date their owner. And another mistake women do to have young children is their their profile photo, their main primary photo, will be them with their kid right next to their face. In other words, 
they're telling men, hey, I come as a package. You, I just want to let you know off the bat. That's a turnoff. That, that's not exactly erotic, or, or, or that's not a, a physically, uh, a physical uh, uh, stimuli or attractant to, to men. Is to see. I knew you were going to do that. All right, you want to come over? You want to come over and say hi? While we're doing finishing up the show? It's Same thing for <laughs> travelogue photos with no one in them. What's the point? And if you say you are active with a athletic body, I'd like to see it. Descriptions can be subjective. And your perception might be different from mine. Exactly. But, you know, be honest, because if you're not <clears throat> honest, it's going to bite you on the ass. Yeah. I mean, eventually the, the man is going to find out the real you, Ooh. and vice versa. So, you know, you got to, it's always good to be honest up front. Uh, what about the bald men that wear the toupee and, <coughs> and the woman thinks he's got that massive head of hair, and then all of a sudden, you know, yeah. Wind blows it off his head on the first date. The low gain didn't do such a good job. No. Yeah. Oh, is this? Oh, I think the camera's catching a little bit of that. I think so. Well, the camera, the camera's catching. Just watch he don't get a little uh, wild because he is feral. This is a feral cat. Yeah. But it's so he's so friendly. I know. And I know. healthy looking. But I think uh, after Mike was uh, petting him and this, that, and the other he thing, swatted him? I think he went after his face or something of oh. that nature. So okay, well, got to be careful. Well, he's he's a healthy looking cat. I mean, his eyes are clear, his coat. Um, I, you wouldn't think it's feral. Well, I don't even know if the camera's picking up the cat, but uh, very little. But that that's a, that's the end of that one, right? Yes, that's the oh, end. okay. Oh boy! All right, you know what? Where I guess we saved humanity a little bit this week, as yeah, usual. Yeah, it's true. We we went a little light. We were very long-winded, of course. Uh, 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 it ended up being a perfect show this week. <laughs> oh, now you got a lot of them. You got half his body here now. It's a perfect show. <laughs> if you if you get my drift. Now I know why this cat was named Needy. It's, it's I think it's Needy. It might be Socks. Socks? Well, Socks whatever, has a bigger Whatever head. it is, you could have fooled me when you said it was feral. Now it's licking my finger. So thank you for joining us for uh, this week's Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Like I said, it was a perfect show. Maybe you should take a picture with the cat so you can put it on your... Uh Oh. Online dating service, and the women will go no, crazy. No, I don't. I don't have no. The now women it's will go crazy because you no, have a cat in the photos. No, I'm not on any online dating service. Oh, okay. No. Um, it just licked me with it, with the sandpaper tongue. <laughs> but you see, you see the head of the cat. And Sox's head is more cubby. No, color. I mean uh, in the in the camera. Yeah, no, he got half his body. Oh, half his body. Yeah. All right, that's now it for the perfect away. show. Now he's going away. Thank you. Tail is wagging in that happy, happy go lucky, happy go lucky uh, motion. I think Mike calls him tuxedo. Oh really? Because he's black and white. Yeah. You know? All right, folks. Say so long to these jabronis. Uh, so long, jabronis. I hope he's a cat lovers. Yeah. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.